Evelyn to Philip, March 13, 1945. Dearest Phil, the boss just scooted out to a quick lunch, and just as soon as he scooted, I made straight for some stationery to get this started. He grabs a bite and comes right back, so I won't have much time to really write. I hope to be able to get some real writing done this evening. The letters I received yesterday were yours of March 2nd, airmail, and March 4th, 5th, 6th, v-mail. There was a letter from Snuff and your January bond. I'll answer your letters this evening. Adele went to sleep soon after I got home. She had not napped in the afternoon, and Ruth and I went out to Frankfurt Avenue to shop. It rained lightly all evening, but we made good connections and didn't mind. We visited several stores and could find nothing. The last shop, a Ritzy shop, incidentally, remember how I used to buy at Ritzy? Proved to be the spot we desired. I headed straight for a rack marked drastically reduced, and Ruth got two stunning dresses, and I got myself a plaid jumper all three items costing us $23. My jumper sold for $7 originally, and it cost me only $2.99, so you can readily see why I bought it. My jumper is a red and navy blue checked material with two lines of white between the squares. It's a rayon and wool mixture, has a very full gathered skirt with large pockets on either side, and two large straps, about four inches wide, crisscross to compose the top. The straps meet in the front. The back of the skirt has red buttons all the way down. It's cute and well worth the money. I'm wearing it today. It's a real pleasure to have something nice to wear to work. I've been wearing the same old two skirts week in and week out, and this new jumper lifts my spirits, even though it is so inexpensive. Ruth's dresses are lovely. One is a black silk with a low-cut round neckline, puffed sleeves, gathered skirt with slash pockets, and the neckline, sleeves, and pockets are trimmed with black glittering sequins and black net ruffles. I tried it on first, but I look positively horrid in black. Aqua and red are my colors, but definitely. Ruth didn't want this dress at first because the tag says, said it was a size 9. After I had tried it on, I was convinced that it was larger and made her try it. She looks very well in black, and the dress fitted her nicely. It was a $15 dress marked down to $9. Just before the store closed, my eye caught another number an aqua gabardine that was positively stunning. It is made on the order of my beige sailor, what used to was, and the collar is edged with aqua fringe and has large gold hobnails all about the edge in a fancy design. It buttons down the front with large buttons that have an edge of gold. The material composes the next part, and there is a large gold nail head in the center. On the sides are large pockets trimmed the same way with fringe and nail heads. This dress was $20 and was cut to 11 I practically had to hit Ruth on the head to get her to buy it, and when she got it home, she liked it better than the black. I'd like to have it myself, but it looks better on her and does more for her than it does for me. I can wear it too, but I would have to wear it with a fine gold belt. I have such a small waist that it is slightly large about the waist. All in all, we got excellent buys and came home very tired, but more than satisfied. It was way after 12 when I got to bed, and Adele woke me twice. In fact, she woke me that many times the past few nights, and I feel a bit haggard due to lack of sleep. Adele is getting her two-year molars and is teething something awful. She doesn't eat a thing but I don't bother to give her anything unless she asks, and she usually asks for something. When she woke this morning, her skin was a bit rashy, as it usually gets when she is teething, just about the cheeks. I said that her skin looked funny and she was very hurt, 
In fact, when we were all downstairs and eating breakfast, Harry, Goldie, Mom, I mentioned that Adele's skin looked rashy. Adele piped in with, Mommy, my skin isn't washy, it's chapped. I couldn't help laughing at the remark. What a kid. I forgot to tell you that we are all chipping in $6 a piece for a colored girl who is working for us for three days to clean up the place, which isn't livable any longer. Well, the first day made such a difference, I almost felt at home again. Imagine paying $6 a day to a girl when I don't even make that myself. Well, it just had to be done, and that's that. That, incidentally, is why we were all eating breakfast so early, so that we could be finished before the girl came. She's a good worker, and the place really should look nice when she's finished. Today, on my way to work, I missed the L at 8th and Market and decided to roam about Gimbel's basement while waiting for the next train. In those few minutes, I managed to buy myself two pairs of third-grade stockings, which are perfect as far as I am concerned, for 44 cents a pair. I paid a dollar a pair recently for the same junk, and they ripped quickly. I'm treating myself good this month, as you may have noticed. I don't have a decent bra, slip, or blouse left, and those three items are next on my shopping list. I didn't mention that it is closing time, and I am working on this again. Today, your V-mail of March 5th arrived and informed me that you had received two packages, one containing your shoes, the other film, gum, etc. I'm glad you told me not to get any more cigarettes because I had intended to buy a carton if I could get it. I'm back home, as you must have guessed, by the change of type. There isn't much in your letters that inspires comment on my part except this. It is funny that my letter to the war bond office should be endorsed by you. It's nice to know that everything I do leads to you. Your birthday email was very sweet. And thanks for being so thoughtful as to my birthday and the doll for Adele. I'm sure Adele will take to the doll just as she will take to you. She'll take it right into her heart. I'm sorry you're so disappointed at my not taking a picture for you. I didn't have the opportunity to fix up when I decided to take Adele to Lorston. And since I didn't look too well either, I decided against it. I rushed to get Adele down there and had no time for myself. As I told you, I'm having the photographer come to the house to make a picture of Adele, Mom, and myself, and that will probably be done about my birthday. As I've told you, Adele hasn't been resting, and I'm feeling sort of tired these days. I want to look well if I take a picture. You know, sweet, I still have another coupon from Brunel Studios. And I think I may have a picture of Adele and myself made, if you'd like that. I don't have any exceptionally good pictures with Adele. First, I'll finish with Lorston, and then we'll start with Brunel, okay? Speaking of pictures, I'd like to get a gander at some of your likeness. It's been a long time since I had some pictures from you. By the way, Adele can count up to 12 by herself. I wish you could hear some of the things that come out of her. We love you, darling. You are Ev. P.S. Didn't get the opportunity to say as much as I wish, but want to get this off, so I'm posting it anyway. More tomorrow. I love you, sweet. Philip to Evelyn, 13 March, 1945. Ev, dearest. Seems like the only thing I have to write about anymore is the movies. Last night, as I told you in yesterday's communique, I saw and heard Rhapsody in Blue. Well, sweet, I'd need a lot of time and space to tell you how thrilling a film this one is. Sufficient to say that I haven't enjoyed a picture more in years. The music and life of George Gershwin are superbly played and portrayed, and the cast seemed to put everything they had into it. Robert Alda is George Gershwin. I don't believe I've seen a more convincing characterization. Joan Leslie is still one of the cutest and most talented gals in pictures, and Al Jolson, Charles Coburn, 
Albert Gosserman, Alexis Smith, Hazel Brooks, Paul Whiteman, Oscar Levant, and others in the supporting cast weren't hard to take either. By all means, Chippy, see this one. Just got back from seeing a picture that you might like, as it stands. I thought that it had tremendous opportunities for humor and tender pathos if they had been developed. The picture is The Impatient Years with Jean Arthur, Lee Bowman, and Charles Coburn. I recommend it to wives of absent soldier husbands, but not to soldiers. It's a silly business as far as they are concerned. Who ever heard of a soldier that would choose to sleep on the floor, even if his wife were practically a stranger to him? See what I mean? So much for the movies. I had half hoped that the proofs of the pumpkin would be along today, but I wasn't entirely disappointed, because your V-mail of 5 March was in the mail. It was written in longhand. Eddie had taken the typewriter, so it was rather short. Was glad to learn that Jack Gutkin did get home after all. Too bad he has to come back, though. Glad to hear that you and Mom got out to the movies together, too. It warms me just to contemplate it. It really does. In closing, you remind me that 5 March made 19 months since we saw each other, as if I needed to be reminded. But be very sure, sweetheart, that if it takes another 19 months or 19 years, I'll return to you with all the love I ever wore you. Time ceased to exist for me the moment I left you, and the day I return will be just as 6th August 43. You'll see. Just have faith in the love of your Phil. Milk Brown, Phil's cousin to Evelyn. March 13, 1945. Dear Evelyn, no mail from you since I wrote to you last, but I have plenty of time now, so I'm dropping you a few lines. At the present time, I'm in the hospital and came in the ninth of this month. It's nothing serious, though, and only have a small sore on my toe, and they put me in here to keep me off my feet, as it needs rest to heal up quickly. I guess I'll be in here for a week or so. I need a little rest anyway, and this sure is the place to get it, and suits me fine. To tell you the truth, though, I'll be glad to get out, as I can't stand too much of this laying around doing nothing. They put hot towels and water bags to my toe three times a day, and it's clearing up nicely now. The food here is fairly good, but we don't get enough of it, and I stay hungry most of the time. Asking for a second piece of bread is like asking for their right arm, and I'm not joking either. The hospital is only about a 10-minute ride from where the company is at. There are a few other boys in here from the company, and I see them every day. We get our mail here daily, as our mail orderly brings it to us from the company. They have a movie here also, and I have seen one fairly good show since I have been here. The only reason that I haven't seen more is that it was raining the other evenings. It's raining now, and it looks like no show tonight either. From the looks of the sky, I don't think it will clear up for tonight. This sure is the life here. Beds, mattresses, sheets, pillows, and boy, that bed sure does feel good. I sleep like a little baby at night. We even have pajamas to wear. How about that? What's new going on around town, and how's Harry making out these days? I still haven't heard from Phil, and I'm going to write him another letter tomorrow. Well, Evelyn, I'll close for now as I'm out of news. Give my regards to all. Write to you again soon. As ever, Milt.